Hey everyone, Derek here with a tip today for how you can add a little filmic flavor to your color palette by using Color Crosstalk. Color Crosstalk is a concept used by many colorists as part of their look development. There are many plugins and DCTLs out there that can do this, but I want to show you how you can do the same thing inside of DaVinci Resolve for free. With the term Color Crosstalk, I am referring to the manipulation of these values in the red, green, and blue channels, and how they interact with one another. There are different names for this, so people often use the terms RGB mixer or 3x3 matrix to refer to the same concept. First, let's take a quick look at the effect we're aiming for. I have my vector scope pulled up so we can see how all these um, colors show up as far as hue and saturation. This is the result you get when you just put a color managed CST on an, this particular image with a, a color chart. They're very well distributed around the spectrum here. But you can see when I go to the same image underneath film emulation, how the signal gets kind of squashed from this side and from this side and extends this way, kind of like along this skin tone line or this angle right here. This is a common response seen in film and film emulation. It's something we can recreate a little bit with color crosstalk. Just a couple other examples here. Um, this well-known shot from Oppenheimer, shot on film, you can see it's kind of the same thing. These are very uh, squished together. And this clip from Joker, which is a very popular look among other people for uh, film look. It's a very colorful image, but the same thing. All these colors are really pushed in kind of towards the middle on this angle here. We don't see a lot pushing out this way or this way. So let's take a look at how Color Cross Talk can give us a little bit of that behavior. To do that, we're gonna to go to the RGB mixer right here. And there are, are two channels you can use to get this kind of behavior. You can add blue to green or green to blue. I'm gonna show you each one and you can see how they have kind of the same effect, but will give you different results. So this is a two node setup. So I'm gonna make a second node here in the first one. We're gonna change this gamma to linear because it works a little better. And sometimes you might wanna take off preserve luminance. You might wanna leave it on. You could try both ways, see which one works better for you. First, we're gonna work on the green output. We're gonna add some blue to green to get this effect. First, you want to click on this auto normalize button and make sure that's selected. That will keep our values totaling one so that our neutrals aren't affected. So I'm just going to add some blue into green here. I'm going to go to right about here. I'm going to add 0.3 and then auto adjust down to 0.7. And you can see with this effect over here on the vector scope, it's having that same type of behavior. The one thing we got to watch out for here is um, skin tones are rotating away from the skin tone line where they were. So we have another node right after this where we're just going to do a small hue rotation to get that back into place. So I'm going to take Q from 50 and just go down to 48 for this example. And now they're back in the skin tone line. So I'm going to make a compound node so I can disable this quickly and show you an on and off. So here's the effect on the vector scope. You can see that film style behavior with the colors. You have some cue rotations here that are common in film where red is rotating this way. Yellows are rotating to be more golden. And blues are rotating more towards cyan. We also have a little bit of warmth added to the greens and that happens in some film stocks and some film emulation. This is an effect that can appear quite subtle if used by itself, but if you add it with other look elements such as a contrast curve or split toning, it can really add a nice little filmic touch to things. For example, I'll show it on a real world image here. I'm gonna decompose this first just so I can copy it quickly. You could also make a still. For this, I'm just gonna go to this image that we saw in my last video on building a filmic contrast curve. So this is with that curve applied. Here's with it off and here's with it on. So just to add to this a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and copy these nodes over. 
so you can see uh, the fall effect. And I'll show you before and after. So here is the before and the after. And you can see some nice pleasing hue shifts. The sky has become more cyan. Some yellow tones are more golden. The foliage here has warmed up a little bit, which for this type of color scheme, I think works. So just a, a nice little addition to a look. Okay, let's take a look at, there's one more example here. I'm gonna go to this and just reset this. So now we are back where we started and I'm gonna do green into blue. So I'm gonna click the auto normalize button. I'm gonna add this about 0.5. Again, you can experiment if you like it better with this checked or unchecked. And for the hue rotation, I went a little farther here, so I'm going to rotate this to 47. And now you can see, let me create another compound node here. On and off here, just look at the vector scope. You get that same kind of squashed behavior, but in a little different way. This is a good way to make more of a, a pastel image. That type of look is very popular and is also a, a look in many film stocks and film emulations. I'll give you a close up on this one. This is before and after. This actually cools down the greens a little bit, which is nice on a lot of images and a lot of looks. You also get the benefit, as with the other type of crosstalk, of compressing skin tones, which um, I talked about in another video, but this is another way to do that. And I'll show this on another image here. I'm gonna copy this over to this wedding image. Because this type of style is really uh, popular for, for wedding videography. I still have the contrast curve on this too that we added last time. So let me show you the effect on its own. So here's before and after you can see a little more of a pastel vibe and the greens cool down the skin tones are compressed and more pleasing here the yellow turns more golden and the red kind of comes out of any skin that's a little too reddish and to it like i mentioned with the other one it's it's great to add on to something like a film contrast curve so if i just put all these together and I'll give you a before and after. So we kind of go from this type of look to this. So that's my tip for today. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.